Welcome back to the Sanford Edible Garden Trail. This is our second video. We're at Bernie and Dawn's house and we've already had a look through your wonderful backyard uh, vegetable garden. And Bernie's taken us through and showing the wide variety of plants that you've got here and also the insects, beneficial and not beneficial that are growing. So, or breeding here or living here. So if you haven't seen that one, look out for that video. And in this one, I'd love to have a chat with you, Dawn, about butterflies, okay? So I've got a little prop here. I don't know. I'm not actually going to catch any butterflies, but I couldn't really resist. This just looks like so much fun. <laughs> it is fun. Do you, do you actually use it to catch butterflies? We do. Actually, we did a talk for the U2 level at Ferny Grove Primary School yesterday, uh -huh. and the children just love Bernie demonstrating how to use it. Oh, I bet. Yeah. Just yeah. It's like having a kite, but you yeah. you get to collect something in yeah. the end. So. Yeah. I wanted, I thought we'd start with, there's a few things we're going to cover. We're going to talk about plants that you can put in your garden to attract butterflies. Mm -hmm. And also this amazing little project that you've got there that uh, there may be some parents who would like to do this with their children over the uh, Christmas holidays. So we'll get to that in a moment. So uh, if somebody wants to plant to attract butterflies into their garden, where do they start? Okay. What would they well, do? Where would you find info and... I know that I've got a few things yes, here, yes, but yes. is this what... Okay, so the yeah, first thing... Now, I'd just like to say at the beginning, I'm not the expert on butterflies and host plants, which it, we call the plants that the butterflies actually uh, lay their eggs on, a host plant, because it hosts the butterfly, the female. Um, but our club puts out this little book called Butterfly Host Plants, of, and it's um, purely a... There's no pictures. It's purely a list of butterfly and the plants that you can plant in your garden in this area. Uh, you go on our website and you can buy that. It's very inexpensive. It's just boic.org.au and that, that is sort of like becomes a bible for people that are really wanting to plant host plants for butterflies. But the ones that I know about and what my pet project is at the moment is trying to encourage people who live in apartments and units and that's happening more and more yes. even around like suburbs around Mitchelton you'll see you know the units and a lot of people same age as Bernie and myself are in a unit and uh, you can plant house plants in big pots on your balconies that will mm -hmm. attract the butterflies to come in and you'll be standing washing up at your kitchen sink and if you've got a, a kumquat or a lemon tree in a big pot you might find an orchard swallowtail will find it and come in and lay her eggs and then you can follow it through to the caterpillar, to the chrysalis, and then it'll merge and you let the butterfly go and it goes on its life cycle again. So it's sort of, um, instead of planting, I'm not saying you shouldn't plant ornamental plants, but yes, yeah, a plant that will be of interest or help you know, the life cycle of the butterflies. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, I've and got a couple of cum courts there. They're only fairly new. And Bernie's got his citrus at the back down yes. there that you've seen. And we get lots of um, orchard swallowtails coming in there. And we get um, the cabbage whites that come into Bernie's cabbages. And he kills the caterpillars, which I'm not too happy about. <laughs> but he does because I love the cabbages. But <laughs> you can't have it both ways sometimes. Yeah. But, um, so we've, we've got citrus, so we do see a lot of orchard swallowtails, especially this time of the year, because this is butterfly. And what, what colour would they be? They would be, um, I have a photo over here. Oh yeah, do you want to grab it? Yes. Yeah. Um, so that's what the orchard swallowtail looks like. Beautiful. Okay, so they're quite specific to citrus trees. Yes, yeah, citrus trees, that's exactly right. Um, this time of the year is about what we call butterfly time. It, we've had, we've got warmth, warm, it's not too hot. Yes. We've had rain, so everyone would have noticed all the butterflies flying around Brisbane, yeah. some of them on their annual migration. But the ones that I would like to talk to you about, Suzanne, which is <laughs> um, these little seedlings here, uh, the host plant for the Richmond birdwing butterfly, uh, 
Now, Bernie might help me pronounce this. Is it Crip? No, that's not the right that's name. That's not the right one. <laughs> uh, okay, it's this one. It is Parastolochia pravenosa. Okay. Oh, hey, I got it right. Yep. Which, in other words, it's a Richard Birdwing vine. And the Richard Birdwing butterfly is found mainly around Brisbane, down northern New South Wales, some people around Coffs Harbour see it now, but it's around Brisbane, Sunshine Coast. And it became just about in extinct. And about right. 20 years ago, a group, of, about three or four entomologists, got together and um, started with the funding from the government. They formed a, an organisation called the Richard Birdwing Conservation Network. And around Brisbane, they got people to grow these vines and make corridors around Brisbane so that we could encourage the butterfly to come back into the environment around here. And it's worked really well. It's wow. been a great success story. Um, Sunshine Coast, Sanford. I was going to say, so is this what yeah. I know um, Peter Storer's work yes. at the Eco Corridor? He's doing yes. good things. Is that what they planted there? They planted a lot of these last June last year, World Swallowtail Day because um, the rich in bird wings from the swallowtails and um, uh, and they planted a, a lot of the vines out there. Now, because we're North Brisbane and we're in the Morton Bay Regional Council like you are, yeah. um, you can go to our native plant nursery at Eaton's Hill called Combacho and purchase these little seedlings, but like they're only $2. Yeah. These are very so, small. They were the last three they had, <laughs> but they... Um, they do grow really well in pots and you can put them in a pot on your patio with one of those cylindrical sort of trellis yeah. things in yep. a pot and train it up. So you can actually, and they get a really dark green coloured leaf. And then you leaf. can see the butterflies and come. Yeah, hopefully. Well, people say to me, oh, Dawn, you, you know, that's not going to happen. <laughs> but I live it, I'm an optimist. <laughs> and I think if you live on a third floor apartment, Block. It might be equivalent to a really high vine that grows naturally in the rainforest. Okay. And if and you've so, got, if yep. we've got enough of them around, and we create a little corridor like yeah. that, that um, it's be like an apartment corridor. Yeah. Like so that. if you're interested in doing something, pop out to Kambatu. You know, they've got lots and lots of inexpensive. And I know Kambatu actually label. I've seen um, all different pictures of different butterflies, and some mm. of their different labels. So then you could work out which host plant for yeah, different butterflies. That's right. Yeah, they do a good job. Um, and earlier you mentioned to me this Brisbane's big butterfly count. Right. Well, this is happening at the moment. Now, there's a group um, called Brisbane Catchment Networks, and they work on regenerating the catchments around the creeks and rivers around Brisbane. Yeah. And nearly all the suburbs have got one. And they're doing a butterfly count around Brisbane over, you do three, like November, January, and March. And um, <laughs> You go to the same site three times and they put out this brochure with pictures, 31 photos of butterflies that are found around Brisbane and you take your butterfly net mm -hmm. and you catch it and you record in here like how many. How many you've seen. You've seen yeah. in that, on that day and what you do is for the people that get worried thinking we're going to kill the butterflies, we don't. We put the butterfly in a jar, a smaller jar, um, and then you identify it and everyone has a look and then you just lift the lid and it goes back. And let it go. And, let it go. and so is this volunteers who do this? That's all volunteers and there's a website called Brisbane Big Butterfly Count. Okay. And the Brisbane City Council has actually sponsored that. 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 Yeah. Okay, so that's another way to get involved. Yes. With the kids yeah. as well, I guess. Yeah. So yeah. let's, um, I'm, I'm really, would love to have a look at this. So Dawn was showing me earlier this um, little setup that you've got that is something that you could do at home with your kids or you don't even can do it even if you don't have kids quite frankly okay. well we were all organized half an hour ago now, <laughs> now we've sort of made a hodgepodge of things yep. haven't we but never mind so, um what's it all about so what happened at the beginning of the year at the end of the butterfly season you know it goes from now till about march april before it gets really cold okay um i don't know how it really eventuated i think we might have done it in the beginning for our grandchildren they were here staying. But Bernie found some eggs down on the lemon tree. And we haven't got any real life eggs to show you, but I printed this off uh, to show you. That's orchard swallowtail eggs on a lemon lemon leaf. So Bernie found the eggs. Now we mm -hmm. wanted to um, 
get them off straight away. Bernie might help me with this. Come in here. <laughs> when did they get the chance of them getting parasitized? Is it then or when they're caterpillars? Well, when they're caterpillars. Yeah. So, we so before they change, before the caterpillar emerges from the egg, we want to collect them. Okay. So we collected the eggs. We put them in in our favourite little takeaway containers. So did you collect, just take the whole leaf that the egg was on? Y yes. You actually just no, you just you take, the take it leaf. exactly like that. Okay. The whole leaf with some fresh leaves to go yeah. in it. And you put a little bit of paper towel down first and sprinkle it with a bit of water. Um, put the, the leaf with the eggs on in there and after maybe five days or something, it'll the eggs will turn into the, the caterpillar. Can you see that, Christine? And um, you've got holes in that lid? Yes. Yeah. Some people don't bother putting holes, but I've got this thing in my mind that they need some yeah. hair. <laughs> yeah, I'd be worried too. So this caterpillar is actually just about, we think, or well, Bernie knows, it's just about, it's very big now, and it's just about to go into that next stage there, which is the chrysalis or pupa. Can you this off? Yeah. This is the pupa, the chrysalis for the orchard swallowtail. Now you sort of see this nature's wonderful. I mean, see the green of the chrysalis, mm. and it's looking like the green from the leaves and everything on the lemon tree, isn't it? Yeah. You know? So these 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 three here have been in diapause diapause all over winter okay. so they've been like that for about five months which is like hibernation hibernation okay. because in the winter it's cold um and that they, they know it's not the time for them to come out because there's no nothing there for them to feed on so they'll okay. stay there so until it warms wait. up so we brought them out from inside where we had them brought them out here about a week ago and i spray them once a day like this with a bit of water trying to trick them into thinking that it's raining <laughs> How did you get them on the stick? Okay, so when you put them in here, in the boxes, and you see the caterpillars starting to grow, get rather big, it's important that you pick, uh, I should tell you first before I go into that, every couple of days you need to clean out the containers. Okay. Because they'll have lots of poo, and you just need to put a clean paper towel, wet it again, and pick some fresh leaves off the lemon okay. tree. Uh, and make sure you get nice new leaves right from the end of the, the branch. And as they get bigger, pick um, a bit of branch that's sort of long like that, so that as the caterpillar is starting to go to the next stage, they will um, spin out a little white thread that attaches the caterpillar to the, the Okay, the so branch. it's actually going to gravitate to the one yes, that's got yeah, the little and see stick. This, these ones here, they were once upon a time green twig, oh, uh, yeah. you know, lemon branches, twigs, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, sure. And they've and, gone brown and, over time. Yeah, and they, they've, they stay there until they emerge. Okay. Now, and getting to this cont little cage, is that what you're wanting me to tell everybody? <laughs> <laughs> well, just, you've stuck it into some foam, so that's just a way of just yeah, keeping so them polystyrene, vertical. Poly yes. Polystyrene. Right. And... and and then this is to catch them when they come out? Is this? That's right, in case you, you can't always be there when they're going to emerge. So um, we check it a couple of times a day. But this is something that I feel is really inexpensive for parents to do with their children. The children can probably do it themselves in the school holidays and see the whole life cycle of the, yeah. the butterfly. In this case, we're talking about the orchard swallowtail. So Bernie just got some wire from his shed I always criticise him for saving all this oh, there's, there's stuff. The things in the shed. It comes handy. So he, he went, joined that up for me. Um, we got this old netting from my sewing box. And Bernie, over many years, has got lots of little interesting clamps. So he just clamped that down. And when if it comes out here and it gets too windy, we just make some weights and sort of put it like that so it won't blow over. So... Um, I think we've got a video of the butterfly emerging, haven't we? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we can, we'll attach that to then the end yes. of this one. Yep. So this was just made out of bits and pieces, like twisty wire, things like that. So how long does it take them to come out, like, of, of that? 
Well, first of all, like if you were wanting to actually see them come out, oh, yes. do you just have to be lucky and get the right time? Well, there are signs. Um, they're nice and green now, but they usually turn brown, I think, don't they? They change colour. Before, say the day before they're ready to emerge, you can start to see the colours of the adult, of the butterfly, inside the skin of the Christmas. Oh, wow. Okay. So yeah, that will give you an idea that they're going to that emerge it's shortly. Soon. And mm -hmm. then check on it often. Mm -hmm. Is that the idea? And then mm -hmm. if you're lucky enough, you'll see them come out. But otherwise, yeah. you'll come back one day and you'll yeah. see a little butterfly yeah. in this. Yeah. In and, here, and, and then you can let it go. This is sort of um, soft and everything. They don't do a lot of damage to themselves yeah. because we wouldn't let them stay in there. Yeah. Um, we're not going to pin them and put them in collections or anything. We're just no, doing no. the life cycle thing. Yeah, so sure. So they come out, hobby. they come out, and then you let them go. And we let them go, and, and it starts all over again. But it, oh, it's wonderful. um, yeah, it's a, a fun it's little a, thing to do. A fun little thing for the children to do. And okay. nearly everyone's got a lemon tree. Maybe if you haven't got one, your neighbours have got a lemon tree. Okay. So if people looked out now, though, would they see the um, eggs out there now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. On the on the citrus. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you've just got to go. So even though you do this early in the year, they it's just a continual cycle. Yeah. So you go to the your lemon tree and pick go to the new growth. Yeah. On the end, nice um, new leaves, pale in colour, not really dark green ones, and have a look. That's where they tend to lay their eggs underneath the the new leaves. Okay. And, then and it looks just like that. I lay their eggs. And well, that looks like a fun project to do over Christmas, and the kids can get involved and learn a little bit more about butterflies and about the garden. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. thank you for sharing that and for sharing your passion for butterflies. <laughs> so, okay. if people would like to kind of get involved in butterflies in Brisbane, they can go to boic.com.au, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. website, and get involved with the other volunteers. And, and we've got lots of information for on beetles and as well as butterflies on there inexpensive little things for people to buy for their children sounds like volunteers are doing a lot of good things yeah yeah it's all volunteers <laughs> okay well thank you very much for showing us uh your butterflies and for your garden bernie as well it's been wonderful to come and visit you and just see how much you can actually grow in a suburban backyard and to get a little bit more uh insight into the world of insects and butterflies so I'm going to go back and check out yeah, my pleasure. garden and start looking for <laughs> looking for butterfly eggs. So thank you. I keep joining us on the trail and join in every two weeks we go and visit a new garden. Hope you enjoyed that video and we'll see you next time.